Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Jason and Chrissy here. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about communication challenges, I think, and okay. some components of that. We saw an Instagram feed on autism that really hit home with us. And so this one's kind of like on that and our experiences with miscommunication and, uh, you know, other things that we tend to do that are off-putting to um, people who are not autistic. Hmm. Yeah, like we we did uh, recently watch something that um, the someone autistic was explaining that they did focus groups or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And like they had a group of people that were autistic, a group of people that were non-autistic, and then a group of people that were like mixed. So like half were autistic, half were not autistic, and the group of autistic people. You know, we're having communication, conversation, understood each other perfectly. Uh, the group of non-autistic people having communication, conversation, understood each other perfectly. Uh, the mixed group of autistic and non-autistic, total disaster. Total shit show. Shit show. Right? <laughs> and yeah. so, like, uh, that's uh, that's like what we've experienced, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh. Um, I, I certainly, someone would say something and I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, and so I'd have to ask questions so that I understood what it was. And by me asking questions in order to come to a um, clarity, deeper understanding, not every case, but I, I think a lot this happened. Uh, people will get frustrated, like, yo, how, 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 how much more clear can I make this for you? And I was frustrated because I don't want to ask you shit. I don't want to ask you a question. I just want to be able to take your communication and do it and be done with it. Like, uh, um, I, I don't want more than that. That would be it. That would be fine for me. But uh, that's not really what happened. So what would happen uh, would be they'd say it and I don't want to ask questions. And so just to avoid that type of interaction mm -hmm. and I'm just going to guess, <laughs> I'm just going to guess and hope that, uh, you know, I, I get it right. And so, uh, <laughs> that would lead to a lot of, uh, differences of, um, you know, just differences and, and, uh, how there is, how I interacted with people and outcomes and uh, all of those, all of those things. But like, it's, it's definitely now knowing that you have this, uh, you're wired differently. So you need a, a totally different type of communication uh, so that you can come to an understanding. And it, that's a two way street. It takes like, both sides to uh, really change the way they operate a little bit in order to um, come to that understanding, come to a, a place of harmony mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, um, just overall knowing what, what, what each side is, is saying and understanding one another. Yeah, I think like I'm personally very blunt and candid in my delivery and communication. And sometimes um, it doesn't align yeah, it with comes, social norms. It comes across as like, I guess, harsh or something right. where people are, are way more used to, you know, um, a more personable or candy coated experience, right. maybe uh, for lack of a better phrase, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, and so I would just end up like in those situations, I would genuinely just stop communicating to the person because I, I don't enjoy an unpleasant interaction. And so uh, that would be how I would just, uh, you know, eliminate that situation in my life. I would, I would just like, you know, continue on and like most likely isolate or just avoid uh, because I don't want to have an unpleasant interaction. Um, I think like uh, the last thing is, you know, I remember as a child, I would uh, address anything I felt was unfair. And I would be very clear that I felt it was unfair. And this is what I would communicate. I would be like, this is unfair. This is why I think it's unfair. And as a child, I would look at my parents and be like, 
fix it. You know, like I, I would genuinely be like, like it was a lot of times like chores, for example, with my brother, I would be doing a lot of things in the house. My brother hardly did anything in the house, the things that he was assigned to do. My father did them and I found it to be unfair. And so I would, I would say this all the time and I would not, my, my communication would be addressed with, okay, just deal with it or it's not your place. And then I would ultimately, it would result in a meltdown um, that was referred to as like dish mode in my, my childhood home. Uh, Chrissy's in dish mode. And it was just because uh, I would get overwhelmed with feelings of unfairness and it would come out in a meltdown. Um, and so like, you know, we're very candid in our communication and delivery uh, not all of us, but some of us, right? And so like, it's always important to remember that uh, the autism spectrum is very, very uh, vast. And so people uh, have different experiences and they present differently. And so we're just simply sharing our experiences and how as we explore autism, uh, we're finding like how it's affected our entire life, of course. And so I think like communication is a really big one. And regardless of where, if you're autistic or non-autistic, I think that having unconditional love, patience, compassion, and harmony, or un, like, you know, um, just a lot of patience and understanding will result in harmony. And um, I really appreciate, you know, of course, like Jeff and Shalia's work and the teachings of union because it teaches us all to do that and really love yourself wherever you're feeling upset. That's the, what we do. It's a spiritual practice that we have in our life that we embody every day. And it really helps with these kinds of things. So we don't hold on to experiences or we don't hold on to uh, unpleasant feelings. We move through them and love ourselves. And through that, we find peace in our life. And uh, where we need to put boundaries, we feel safe in putting those boundaries so we can expand our peace and feel safe in our life, which is um, really important for somebody who is autistic. Yeah. yeah. So. Is that all? That feels like that's one's it, babe. Okay. We will see you all next time. Yep. Bye. See ya.